How do you deal with disobedience in Sunday school? When you have a non-Christian parent or parents that drop off their kids, a lot of times the whole correction or discipline is not being taken place in the home because they're not believers. So when the kid comes to Sunday school or to church functions, whatever it may be, and the child is rude or interrupting or becoming a distraction for everyone else, how should we deal with that and still make sure that the parents feel loved and welcome to be a part of our fellowship and not judged or in a contentious position as much as possible? And obviously, like we're doing VBS, you yeah. have a lot of kids, this applies. How do you handle that situation as an administrator, Sunday school teacher, or helper? Right. Um, you know, uh, why don't you call in next week and ask my wife? And she'll do a better job. Okay. I thought, I'm, I thought I'm, I'm going to answer it. But oh. <laughs> Um, she'll she'll give you some better answers. She's been a Sunday school for, uh, teacher forever. You know one of the, one of the things that uh, uh, you know we're we're dealing with when when we uh, do Sunday school, and um, I don't know what church you go to. I don't know if you go to our church or not. But one of the things that we're dealing with uh, when we're dealing with Sunday school is exactly like you were talking about. There's all these kids who come from non Christian backgrounds or uh, come from. Uh, family backgrounds that are just messed up and they may have no discipline at all. And they may be little brats, you know, frankly. And uh, um, what we're supposed to be doing is, is ministering to the kids. And so in your Sunday school, uh, and this is what I'm going to tell you, in your Sunday school, um, you have a Sunday school, you have somebody who's in charge and they should be giving you direction on what the, what the fellowship would have you do in certain situations. And, and so, um, you know, uh, a, a lot of times in, in Sunday school, what uh, what they'll do with kids is um, they'll have them sit by themselves or, you know, do the kind of timeout thing and, and that kind of stuff. And there's all kinds of little things that they do. Most most often when I was in Sunday school, uh, teaching Sunday school, I just tried to engage the kids. And, you know, I'm a big guy. And, and uh, a lot of times uh, Sunday school can be easier for guys than it is for ladies uh, because there's kind of a natural um, respect thing that goes on between little kids and, and men because the deep voice and, and, and the bigness and, you know, who is this guy kind of thing. And so um, I, I've never had huge problems with, with kids in my Sunday school class. Uh, but other people who um, look nicer than me <laughs> have had all kinds of problems like that. And so they have to they have to come up with uh, creative ways to do that. And so I don't want to give you a, one, uh, and I'm not disseminating here, um, I just don't want to give you a one size fit all fits all type of thing, and then you go into your Sunday school and, and apply that, and then your administrator comes back and goes, "What are you doing?" So I would, if I were in your situation, I'm teaching a Sunday school class. I got kids who are unruly. I would go to uh, whoever's in charge of the Sunday school and say, "Hey, what is what is the policy here? What are we supposed to do in thus and such a situation?" And, uh, you know, again, my, my wife uh, has been teaching Sunday school forever, and uh, she's really good at getting kids' attention and, uh, and keeping it and um, handling little kids that are disrespectful. Um, one, of the, one of the things that I would watch out for is um, when you have non-Christians uh, who are bringing their kids into Sunday school, um, just, just think about what the, what the mom and dad are doing. And so what they're doing is they don't know Jesus and they're coming to church. And so they're, they're walking out of the building and hopefully they've just had this encounter where they realize that God loves them and he cares about them, realize that they need to turn from their sin. And so they got all these things going through their head. And then they're going to come over to Sunday school and they're going to come up and, and come in and pick up their little darlings. And, and they may be little monsters. And the first thing that they hear from the Sunday school teacher is, your kid's a monster. And, you know, why don't you discipline them? Or, you know, get, give any of that kind of tone to them. And what, it, what ends up happening is it becomes a really unpleasant experience for them. And so we want, we want people to come to Christ. And so uh, whenever, I was, uh, whenever I was dealing with parents uh, when they were coming to pick up their kids, I used to be a Sunday school administrator, so... Whenever I was uh, dealing with parents who were coming in to pick up their kids, um, there were parents that I could tell what was happening with their kids. And uh, they, I knew that they wanted to know because they were going to go home and take care of things and, and that kind of stuff. And it wasn't going to be a big fat deal. 
And then there were parents who were brand new, and if they came in and said, did my kid act up? And, you know, I wouldn't lie to them, but i I'd go, you know what? It's not a big deal. We had a good time. And so, you know, just just do that kind of thing with them. And then if, they, if they're coming for a, a period of time and you realize that they get saved or, you know, there are, are some behavior uh, behavioral attitudes that need to be taken care of, then you can have a talk with them. But, you, you know, you just need to be sensitive to people and what's going on in their lives when they're coming in. You know, most of the people that we're dealing with around us, are, are they have completely messed up lives. And so they, they've got bigger things uh, going on in their families and in their lives than uh, their lack of discipline, in, you know, with their kids. And uh, a lot of times that's, that's just a, a result of a lifestyle. And so, um, again, you, you need to keep that in mind. Um, when I'm dealing with a Christian, it's different than when I'm dealing with a non-Christian. And so, you know, Christians, we have... Uh, you know, the Bible says we don't judge those who are outside, uh, but those who are inside, we do. And that's in 1 Corinthians chapter 5 at the end of the chapter. And so um, I have more of, uh, more of a, uh, a, a uh, um, I'm, I'm, I don't know what the word would be. Uh, I have, I have tolerance. More, yeah, well, I have more tolerance for, for a non-believer than a situation in a believer's life. Yeah, that's absolutely true. But um, I have I have more of an influence on a believer, or or more of a responsibility to tell a believer something uh, about their lifestyle than I do a non-believer. And so you can tell that from the last couple of questions. It's like when I'm when I'm dealing with a non-believer, it, you know, the main subject is Jesus, and you know, all the other stuff is peripheral and we could deal with it, but we're going to go right back to Jesus. And when I'm dealing with a believer, the Jesus issue has already been taken care of. And now some of the peripheral things need to be looked at. And so uh, I just keep that in mind. So I like what you said about not giving just a one fits all answer to, because it depends on like all the stuff you said about believer, non-believer, but how long have they going there? You know, and a whole bunch of stuff goes into that. than just better a one line answer. But one thing I, I see in this question too, or think about, I should say, in this question too, is the flip side where you have um, people that may not be involved as administrators or helpers, but just parents and families. Mm -hmm. They drop their kids off at church. I guess this would be on the other side. They get all torqued off because there are, you know, non-Christian kids in there that have attitudes that, and there's so many things that get brought up with this that, you know, as a parent, listen, I don't want my kids learning certain words right. or certain lifestyle issues that I haven't taught them yet or anything. But listen, I want unbelievers to come to church. So there's a balance there that you can mm -hmm. expect this stuff is just going to be there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We just had a, a, a concert with Holly Starr, and she had her purse ripped off. You know, it's like, so, you know, on the one <laughs> hand, I, you know, I want unbelievers there. But on the other hand, you get unbelievers there, and they do what unbelievers do. Yeah. And, and so, um, you yeah. know, it's, it, it's one of those things. Uh, the, the church isn't designed to be a place... Uh, where we hunker down and hide out and keep the bad people away. Right. Uh, the church is designed to be a place where 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 Jesus is glorified, and um, those who don't believe and those who are seeking come in, and they're blown away by the fact that God is in our midst. Yeah. Yeah. That's out of First Corinthians fourteen. Yeah. So I say that because I think people need to have a little bit more grace when they're like, especially when they don't know the situation, like you can walk into a Sunday school class and have certain things, but you don't know what's going on. You don't know who's there. Like maybe there's other issues that God's dealing with instead of just leading to a judgment, whether it's your yeah. kid, whether they're talking to you because your kid's, you know, a little monster or whether your parent walking in. I mean, there's so many things. Have some grace. There's a lot more going on than you may see Yeah. or not see. My, my, uh, my boy is one of, the, one of the neatest humans on this planet <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. And uh, um, when he was, oh gosh, probably two years old, he was biting every kid in the class. And they didn't tell us for a while. <laughs> and they, they finally started telling us that he was biting other kids and, and uh, we had to take care of it. So really interesting. Nice. That goes out to you, Nathan. Yeah, I'm going to ask you that, Nathan. Biting people. 